Hi, Steve here. A deleted government report exploring how to make the public alter its behavior to accept the new green economy reveals how COVID-19 restrictions have created a population with a deep set reverence for authority and a powerful tendency to conform. Paul Watson said the report was inadvertently published by the British government before being quickly pulled down, but several journalists were able to retrieve it. The document explored how to weaponize behavioral psychology to nudge the public into supporting measures and adopting behavior without them explicitly knowing they're being manipulated. They found that the same techniques the government used to force people into accepting lockdown could be used to make them change their lifestyles in the name of preventing climate change. Under the heading, Principles for Successful Behavior, the paper noted government statements, actions, and laws powerfully shape perceptions of normative and acceptable behavior. For instance, even with public criticism being high, many still perceived government approval as the yardstick for safe behavior during COVID-19. We're allowed to do this now, so it must be safe. This reveals for many a deep set reverence for legitimate government authority, regardless of one's personal political views. While PR stunts like having officials vaccinated live on television work to convince people of the narrative, elite hypocrisy, public officials violating lockdown rules, was found to cause significant damage to public trust the Apostle Paul told the Roman believers, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Too many people who claim to be Christians don't really know what that good and acceptable and complete will of God is. So they just go along with the masses. A very famous man once said, do not conform is difficult advice in a generation when crowd pressures have unconsciously conditioned our minds and feet to move to the rhythmic drumbeat of the status quo. Many voices and forces urge us to choose the path of least resistance and bid us never to fight for an unpopular cause and never to be found in a pathetic minority of two or three. Success, recognition, and conformity are the bywords of the modern world where everyone seems to crave the anesthetizing security of being identified with the majority. In spite of this prevailing tendency to conform, we as Christians have a mandate to be nonconformists. We are called to be people of conviction, not conformity, of moral nobility, not social respectability, we are commanded to live differently and according to a higher loyalty. Every true Christian is a citizen of two worlds, the world of time and the world of eternity. We are paradoxically in a world and yet not of the world." Unquote. That famous man I just quoted was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Too many believers have listened and accepted the mistranslations and different Bible versions of Romans 13. These mistranslations haven't clarified anything, but only confused it. The New King James Version is even a bad translation of the original verses. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, it says, for there's no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Well, that's not true, and let's look at the original. That would lead the unsuspecting believer to just accept everything governments have been doing as right. But look at the original King James Version. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God, not the powers that are in office or the rulers that are in authority right now, but the powers that are ordained of God. Higher powers here are not referring to government officials or presidents or kings or prime ministers apart from carrying out good. All we have to do is read verses three and four, and we can see that's the case. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will you then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and you will have praise of the same. Of the same. <laughs> 
the good, the good rulers, for he is the minister of God to you for good. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he bears not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him who does evil, conforming to evil or conforming to mandates and edicts by so-called governing authorities is not God's will, ever. What happens when we are nonconformists, when we don't comply and fall in line with the masses? The Apostle Paul told Timothy, yes, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. The contemporary English version says, anyone who belongs to Christ Jesus and wants to live right will have trouble from others. In the parable of the sower of seeds in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus basically said that there are four groups of people in this world. Those who don't understand the word of God when they hear it. Those who hear the word and they receive it with joy, but it's only temporary because when any kind of affliction or persecution or real challenge happens, they fall away. Then there's the seed sown among thorns. These people hear the word, but the anxiety of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and they never bear fruit. And then finally, there are those who hear the word and understand it, and they bear fruit. The wisest man who ever lived on earth, apart from Jesus, was Solomon, King Solomon of Israel. He said, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. He said the same thing in chapter 16 also in Proverbs. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Do you kind of get the impression he's trying to make the point stick? We always have a choice. Choices to do it God's way or do it your way. When your way lines up with God's way, then you're doing it the right way. Think about it.